Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Santene Cuono in the 15-minute pool on ICC. Let's play a Sicilian against Santene Cuono. I really can't say that name, but uh, we'll do our best. You know what I want to do? I kind of feel like playing a hyper-accelerated dragon. Just purely off the cuff. He's not going to let me get into the main lines, though. C3. Okay, so c3, I believe, is best met by d5 in this position before white gets a chance to build a big center. I could also play bishop g7, d4, take, take, and then d5. Maybe that's the way I should go. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that instead. Because then if he takes on d5 uh, with the e-pawn, I can play knight f6, intending to recapture with the knight. Oh, he plays e5. Okay, so he's playing to keep my dark square bishop out of the game. That's, uh, that's certainly viable. Let's go knight c6. I'd like to develop this light square bishop somewhere useful, like g4 maybe, and then take here, ideally. Do I do it now? If I do it now, bishop g4, is queen b3 a problem? I can take on f3, and then he takes and I take on d4, so I'd like to think, no, it's not a problem. If I don't seize the opportunity to develop this piece, the chance might pass me by, so I think I probably should, so let's do it. I mean, he could simply play bishop e2. But I can now play e6 and maybe develop my knight through e7. Although I have to watch knight b5. So I have to be aware of that. Well, we have a moment. Let's just check his stats. He is active in every single category. Bullet, blitz, 5 minute, 1 minute, 15 minute, 3 minute, everything. And peak rating in 15 minute of 2038 achieved in February of this year. 27 wins, 25 losses, 11 draws is his record. Bishop c6 is interesting. I feel like I should probably play e6 against this, but I also want to take on f3. Maybe take on f3 first just to try to drag his queen over here. Otherwise, I'm fearful he might play queen a4 and try to insert a capture on c6 while my bishop is not pinning anything. So that's in the event I play something like rook c8, let's say. I don't know though. If I play rook c8, hmm, rook c8 would be really standard. Maybe I should play rook c8. Maybe I should do that. Rook c8, and if uh, queen a4, bishop takes f3, yeah, that's no problem. g takes f3. A6, bishop takes c6, rook takes c6. Maybe he could play queen b3 then, hitting d5 and b7 at the same time. Hmm. If I'm playing bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, I'd have to play e6 then, is the only thing. And he could maybe take and argue that the c5 square is weak. So what about rook c8, queen a4, bishop takes f3, G takes f3, and then queen b6 doesn't work because of knight takes d5. Hmm. I'm somehow just not liking that line. I could also just play e6 and solidify the position. But then he can take on c6 and try to do something similar. But maybe I'll, I'll at least make him waste time. Uh, by playing h3. However, okay, this is something I was alluding to earlier. So if I play e6 here, he takes on c6 with check. I take with my b pawn. He can play queen a4, getting out of the pin. And then if I take on f3, he has queen takes c6 with check. That's important. And then he takes the pawn after I play like king f8 or something. That is important. So all of this is leading me towards bishop takes f3 again. Bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, e6, let's say bishop takes c6, pawn takes, uh, let's say castles, knight e7, knight a4, castles. Yeah, that position's got to be worse for me somewhat. I just feel it is. Hmm, I think I might see a solution to our problem. So, okay, I'm going to play rook c8, and if he goes queen a4, I will take on f3. 
And after g takes f3, maybe queen d7. Okay, he does that. Uh, that's a move I'm happy to see. Okay, now we take. d5 is attacked, so we better defend this. That queen d7 move, seeing that, is kind of key, because then I could keep my uh, d5 pawn defended, and if he were to capture on c6 in that line, I could take, and my queen would be communicating with a7. Okay, knight e7 is kind of indicated now. I'm slightly worried he'll play bishop g5 against that, but it's not too big of a deal, I don't think. Yeah, that's not worth uh, wringing our hands about for too long. Bishop g5, I can just castle, and I'll be threatening knight takes d4. I think I can break this pin without too much trouble. Yeah, let's just castle now. He can get his bishop into f6 later, but with only his queen as an attacker, I don't think it's a big deal. Like, to me, this move seems rash. And actually, I can just play knight takes d4, can't I? I was thinking take first, but the immediate knight takes d4 is even better. Okay, I'm just thinking, because I might even have, like, after knight takes d4, I might even have rook takes c3 ideas. Trying to win his b5 bishop. Let's get this right, though. Taking first doesn't do much. Yeah, let's take here first. No longer pin, so this is legal. Okay, so that move... Um, thinking rook takes c3. He can't answer that with queen takes d4, though. Attacking my rook and attacking a7. Hmm. Can take on b5, but he gets knight takes b5, and maybe the knight can come into d6? Not sure. This is worth a minute to try to get right, though. Maybe just coming back to c6 is best. Saying, I won a pawn. What do you have to show for your last couple moves? I could take on f6, too. Taking on f6 is interesting, because after e takes, it looks kind of dangerous, but I don't think he can do anything. Yeah, he really can't do much. If I take, he takes with a pawn, I play knight here. He does have g4. So if I take, he takes with a pawn, I play knight here. What does he have then? Probably not much, like once again. Hmm. Takes c3, queen takes d4. Rook b2. Mm. It's okay, it's nothing spectacular. Okay, let's just do this. This is really simple, but I think it's good. And I spent enough time looking at the various lines. Bishop takes f6, rook takes c3. Yeah, so now I'll just take with the rook. It's useful that I have rook c4 in a lot of lines. I like the look of that. He's trying to prop up his bishop. That's pretty clear. Hmm. I will have to deal with some level of annoying counterplay. Let's just go here first. And if queen g5, I will take, and then declines to do that. Hmm. So take with the bishop. He takes with the pawn, knight c6. The knight e5 is a threat. And knight d4 is annoying. Okay, let's do that. He is blitzing out the moves. So I'd like to respond by playing a little faster myself. 
I think I'm good here. It's just going to be a little bit tricky. So I ideally like to bank a little time. I wish I had slightly more time than this. But this is the name of the game, <laughs> this time control. Okay, so he's just locking the f6 pawn down for future use. Okay, knight d4 is plenty active. He has to be careful after knight d4 too. Let's do that. He can't get into h6. Not in any way I see it, at least. And then I'll always have my knight coming to f5 if necessary to defend. In the off chance he does get his queen there. He has to be careful not just to lose on the spot. Like queen g3 loses to rook takes c3. Now his, his king side is very much exposed. I think knight f5 should be good. Yeah, let's do that. Knight f5. Try to play queen c7 on the next move. I'd love to win this g5 pawn. That's my real goal. Knight f5 is nice too because he can't play f4 because of knight e3. So that's ruled out. Hmm. Might be trying to move his knight somewhere. Let's go queen b6 first. Just to try to double up our rook's next move. I'm attacking his pawn too. Let's go over here, attack his h pawn. I can break up his pawns with h6 whenever I want as well. It's a nice point. King g2 probably will be played. King g2, and if rook h5, he has queen h4, annoyingly. Rook c8 runs into knight takes d5, so that's not so good. Yeah, let's just break up these pawns. We'll keep it simple. I would like to just win the pawn outright, but this clarifies things, and that's yeah, fine. I'll take with my knight after he takes here. I think I still have a good shot at winning the f6 pawn. And once I've broken up this stranglehold he has... His position is just really nothing. Okay, here I have rook d4 back if I want. And then win the pawn. Anything else look good? No, I think that's good enough. And then take on g5 next move. What flag is this? El Salvador, okay. All right, let's take. Knight a4, okay. He's trying to come into c5. Let's just hoover this over here. Knight c5, I can play b6 pretty comfortably. He can come back to d3 then with his knight. I also have rook e4 after knight d3. Yeah, my knight, with my queen on d6, he has to be careful about knight h4 check ideas. Let's go here first. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. This queen f3 runs into knight h4, just winning immediately. Queen d3. Maybe I should play b6 just to keep his knight out. That's like the one piece that could do me some damage. It seems excessively cautious to do this, but it's simple. Queen takes e4 as the threat now. Let's just go here. 
gather the f6 pawn. He'll probably try to do something aggressive, but like if queen a6, amongst other things, I can just play rook takes a4 and then take his rook on c3. So he's not coordinated enough to generate some wild counterplay even. Yeah, what's he going to do? There's not much to be done in this position. We can check on h4. Let's do that first. Check. Just see where he steps with this king. I think there's a good chance he'll go to f1, and then I nearly have just queen h2 winning immediately. I'll probably just take on f6, though. Because queen h2, queen g3 defends. Okay, so there, it's rook e1. Rook e1 is just almost winning. <laughs> also almost winning. Yeah, that's that's good enough. Check. Prime of that. Check. I went f2. Check. Yeah, and it's made on g2 next move. Okay, so I went up to 2349 with that win. This game is another example of uh, poor time management by my opponent. I hate to say it, but it's just it's the theme of a lot of these games that I get, and a lot of wins I get in the 15 minute pool. You just you can't play this fast and recklessly and not expect bad things to happen to you. You know, he used not even a third of his time and you know, he passed up many opportunities to to play better moves and he just made an outright blunder with Bishop F6. So, Okay, let's have a, a look at it. So I played this hyper-accelerated dragon. I was just talking with a student today about the difference between the accelerated dragon, which is knight c6 followed by g6 next move. So like d4, take, knight takes, and then g6. So the difference between this line and the hyper-accelerated, which is g6 immediately. And as far as I know, the only difference is that after d4, c takes, in the hyper-accelerated, white, white can play queen takes d4 because there is no knight on c6. So it's kind of give and take. Like hyper accelerated, you get to Fianchetto the bishop faster, and you avoid lines like the Ross Limo variation, bishop b5. But the downside is you allow an extra option for white, and queen takes d4. So, so I was looking forward to going into some of these hyper accelerated lines, but he instead played c3, and yeah, d5 is a move here, I'm trying to spring this on white before they get a chance to play d4 themselves. But I remembered this possible variation that occurred in the game, trading and then d5. It just seemed interesting, because if they take with the e-pawn, I have knight f6 and going after this pawn, trying to recapture with the knight. So d5, e5 is principled, trying to keep this bishop at bay. Play knight c6. They could try to play a prophylactic move like h3, although my, knight could, or my uh, light square bishop could be developed to f5 in that case. Still, though, maybe that's a decent idea. Like, he could just continue, say, knight c3 now. I bet white's up better in this position. Yeah. Maybe I wouldn't play bishop f5 in this case. Maybe I would try to undermine his center, or maybe play knight h6, but knight h6 I'm not so sure about. Sometimes they can even keep us out of the f5 square. This this reminds me a lot of the Gurganidze variation that you see me play sometimes on my channel. The Gurganidze and the Karakon. So I played knight c6, he went knight c3, bishop here, and then bishop b5. I mean, it's not surprising that the computer thinks white's a lot better in this position. <laughs> white has the center, black's bishop's kind of bad, I'm a little bit behind in development. Um, behind in development mainly because he can castle quicker than me. Uh, right now we have the same amount of minor pieces developed, but it's harder for me to castle. I have to keep uh, a firm watch on my d5 pawn. So here I debated for a little bit. I spent, what, almost yeah, solid three minutes, a little over three minutes on this move. That's a little too much. I think I should have made a decision quicker. Somehow knight h6 didn't come into my consideration, the top move of the computer, trying to come to f5. That move would make perfect sense. I guess I was a little paranoid sure. about obtaining a structure like this where I have the c5 weakness. So little tip, um, backwards pawns. Like, my pawn on c6 is backward. There's no other pawn on either side of it that can protect it. If you look at the square immediately in front of a backward pawn, 
it's almost always weak. So very often that square immediately in front of the backward pawn will be weak. So that's why when he takes on c6, his long-term plan would be to occupy that square with his knight. And that's what I was worried is what would happen in the game. So I played rook c8 after some thought. Yeah, I, I was originally worried about queen a4 in this position. That was it, right? And then take g takes, and I was wondering how I was going to avoid losing a pawn. Hmm, I can just play a6 though, huh? Take and then rook takes? But I thought queen b3 was winning something. Attacking this and also here. Ah, queen c8. That, that's a very difficult defense to see. Defending the b-pawn. The knight cannot take because of rook takes c1. Winning. So, and also if queen takes d5, I have this move. Rook takes c3. Which somehow leads to a draw. How does that work? B takes, queen Check. takes. Hmm, the engine's coming around. Okay, so it thinks this is actually good Check. for white now. King e2, and if I take the rook on a1, queen c4, and my queen is trapped. Weird. And he's threatening mate. <laughs> That's a brutal move, queen c4. That's a cool line. Something just felt kind of wrong about this line, but I didn't see this far by any means. I only saw the position after queen b3, but I just didn't think I could defend both b7 and d5. That's cool, though. So my king is in trouble. King d8. He can almost win my queen by moving the bishop, but his rook is undefended. Let's say he plays rook d1. Queen b1. Okay, and I can try to escape. This looks extremely messy. Of course, the computer like finds some forced draw in a totally messy position to a human eye. Okay, so maybe rook c8 is not as good of a move as I made it out to be. Knight h6 could have just been played. So if knight h6 and he goes queen a4, I can just castle, huh? And sack the c6 pawn? Because I get counterplay against d4. Okay. And probably my piece activity makes up for the fact that I'm down temporarily. Yeah, I mean, I can take d4 and then f3 will be threatened, c2 will be threatened. I can see that why this would be good for black. Massive peace activity. Hmm. Okay, so I played rook c8. He went h3. I took, he took. e6 here. And you can see he's just playing rapid fire. I mean, his first 11 moves have been played in 45 seconds. And I don't know about him, but I think this is kind of a unique position. Like, I would really doubt if he's had this position before. He might have had, like, this position before or this position before. But the last, like, few moves at least are unknown territory. I would be shocked if he's knowledgeable about this position. So you, you can't just keep blitzing moves out. I mean, you shouldn't be doing this against anyone, let alone me. <laughs> you know, um, I hope that doesn't come off as arrogant, but it's it's the truth. Like, you can't play like this fast against an IM and not expect bad things to happen. <laughs> it's just not, no. <laughs> So, and bishop f6 is just an outright blunder. Like, his, his bishop wants to go to f6, but um, he just he can't play it right now. He has to defend the d-pawn. And I'm not criticizing him to just, like, berate him and make fun of his play or whatever, but as a coach, like, this bothers me, like, seeing this, because these things are so easy to fix. Like, time management is something you can fix at any level. It has nothing to do with the position on the board. It's just recognizing when you should be spending time. And positions that are unfamiliar, you got to spend time in. And you know, you if you find yourself like always itching to play the first move that pops into your head, like Bishop F six, like he knows he wants to plant his bishop there. It looks cool, and um, it's a good attacking move, and he can get a pawn in there if I if I take. But if your first instinct is always to go with your first instinct, that's bad, and that's something you can fix just by slowing down. So, yeah, queen takes d4, and his position's already unrecover unrecoverable, I think. So, knight back to c6. Um, yeah, I, I guess I could have taken here, huh? I was debating, like, whether that was a good idea. I was not quite sure about this. Knight e f5 and then g4. Oh, I have e5, that's nifty. And if he takes knight f3 check, check wins the queen. Okay. Yeah, and same queen g5. 
after e5, trying to defend the pawn. Knight f3 check. That's a great move, e5. I wish I would have seen that. That would have been cool. Because then, like, even if he backs... Like, it's hard to even find a safe square for his queen, because, like, any of these squares, they get forked by knight f3 check. So, yeah, he'd have to play by process of elimination. Queen to c1. And this also looks bad, yeah. Knight f3 check. check. King h1. Knight here. Threatening this, or just taking... It's too much. But I kept it simple. I just retreated my knight to c6. He took on c6. I took with a rook. g4. I mean, I understand like playing fast now at least because given the fact that he's down a pawn for very little, um, he may just be reckoning at this point that his best chance to get back in the game is to um, just start playing quickly and try to get me in time pressure. So I could at least understand that. But it's consistent with something I've just harped on over and over again in this channel. You can't... Um, it's so much harder to work your way out of a bad position than it is to like proactively spend your time and, and focus on a, a position that's, that's fine for you to begin with. I guess that doesn't have much to do with um, how fast he played, but um, it's the same principle. Like His chances are much, much worse now that he's down a pawn than if he had played slowly earlier and you know used the appropriate amount of time. G4, yeah, th this move is reckless, but you know he's got to try to create something. It crossed my mind like what to do against knight b5, because at least then he'd be threatening to come into d6 or maybe threatening the pawn. So maybe that was worth a shot. I'd probably take, take maybe knight c8, just to cover this in d6 square. Because he can never play queen h6, because I just do this, win the pawn. I do see that the engine likes knight f5 as well. And if g4? What happens after g4? Rook c4. That's eh, a little more complicated. Queen here. h6. Okay. Queen back to d2. Knight h4. Again, if he takes here, I take there. Okay, so I can keep my, my knight active. But knight b5 might be a better try. He did g4, I went rook c4. I was expecting queen g5, but he went back to f3. I took, he took with a pawn, knight c6. Here, yeah, knight d4. Now, as I said, he has to be careful not to just lose, like queen g3, trying to like maybe work his way over here, just instantly loses to this move, with knight e2 coming next, regardless of which way he takes on c3. And if this Check. also fails. So... He went queen back to d1. I went knight f5. I think I did a good job of, of moving fairly quickly roundabout here. Maybe didn't play the best moves, but I think this was a good practical choice. h6 just to break up his pawns. I really would have liked to win this pawn outright, but this is also good. And it destroys any illusions he had of, of checkmating me. So Rook d4, queen here. Take the pawn. Yep, knight a4. Thought he'd jump into c5. At least try this. <laughs> Rook d2. That's a nice one. So if he takes it, knight h4 Check. here, and then knight f3, hitting the queen and threatening mate on h2. Yeah, I was pretty sure I was missing a tactic or two. This didn't come up, though. He didn't play knight c5. Key 4. b6, again. A cautious move, but I can afford to play that. Just keeps his knight out of c5. Shuts down one of his only sources of counterplay with that knight coming in. Here I have to make sure not to fall for the cheapo. Queen takes e4. And this is minus 8 territory, almost. I'm up 2 pawns, but it's almost minus 8. Check. Yeah, Check. rook e1. The king f1 is his only move in this position. Now I was thinking about this, but he does have queen g3. But, yeah, I think taking on f6 is simple enough, and it's going to be a win. It's just a matter of time and not blundering. So, okay, I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope this was another lesson in, um, not lesson, but uh, another illustration of why it's so crucial to manage your time and not try to think your way out of a bad position, but rather spend your time so you don't get into these bad positions.
And if the position is unfamiliar, it's totally worth it to spend an extra minute or two in the opening trying to figure out um, how you should play it and try to find your way forward. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave me any feedback in the comments. Talk to you guys later. Bye.